Hello, everyone. Welcome to part three of our three-part series on print marketing with Tom Britton. I'm William Rader. I'm the founder of Well Attended. We do box office management for theaters and variety performers like Tom Britton. If you're just joining us today, what I'd like you to do is just in the chat box, go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know where you're from and the types of shows that you produce. Tom, before we get started here, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you use your print marketing as merchandise in the back of the room sales? Yeah, will do. Uh, thank you, William. What we're doing today is talking about specifically, so part one was how to get this stuff. Just how do you get printed materials? Starting from working with a designer to where do I even send the file and then what is all this stuff called? Uh, part two yesterday, and you can all find these both at William's website if you go to wellattended.com slash podcast um, or uh, look in the look down below in the show notes. You'll find links to all that stuff. You'll find the show notes also. You don't need to take notes as we go because William has them. Look in the show notes on YouTube in the comments there. You'll find links to it. Part two was yesterday, which was taking this and putting it into social media. So how do you take a poster? That does me no good to just take a picture and put this on Instagram. How do you convert it, et cetera? Today, we're going to talk about now that you've got this stuff, one cool thing to do is take your poster and just leave off. This will be where it says, you know, the William Ritter Theater, 8 p.m., uh, $25, get tickets now, VIP, whatever, okay? Free stuff, telecom. Uh, leave that off, package it up, put it in a big bundle with some other stuff, and then you can sell these things in the back of the house. This is every band does this. You know, you go to see a show and in the back they have T-shirts and CDs. Um, that's what we're covering today. Uh, to kind of give you an idea. So well, uh, well attended is a ticketing software solution. That's why William's here. He's also got a lot of experience running workshops. So he's going to help kind of manage everything. So if you're in chat, you're chatting to William right now, because otherwise I'll read the chat the whole time and stammer over every single thing I'm trying to say uh, about me. I'm Tom Britton. If you've watched the first three, I'm going to do the short version. If you really have no idea who I am, go back and watch the first two. And I covered this in depth, but I'm a theater performer here in Chicago who tours nationally in the U.S., which means I play a big city like Chicago, but also play small little towns all over the world. I am fortunate enough to make my living doing this show, although I produce some other theater, but the vast majority of my living is made off my one-man show, Freak Show and Tell. Um, I have to compete with big dogs. <clears throat> like I always mention that Hamilton is here. Book of Mormon is here. Blue Man Group is here. But theaters you haven't heard of that are powerful in the city, Lyric Opera House, Goodman Theater, Steppenwolf, et cetera. And they suck up all the oxygen. What I mean is I can't go get a bus ad like on the side of a bus or a park bench or like better call Saul. I can't put up my little billboard in the outskirts of town because they're just bidding against me and they'll outbid me. They just have more money than I do. What I do have is more time than a lot of them. So I have to get gorilla in my marketing, man. I got to use print materials when they might be just paying $10,000 for Facebook ads. Well, I'll pay a couple hundred bucks and put up posters. The same thing with merchandising. I've got to be nimble in how I make my money. This allows me to do 200 shows a year. That's one of the reasons I make my living is because I like performing. That's a good thing for me to work a lot. It's fun for me. I'm also from the other side of the coin. I've been a former theater manager and owner. So if you're watching this with the intention of getting your band hired at a bar or getting your show booked at a theater, uh, I've been that guy making the decisions. So I know what I'm looking for when I get your materials. I'm also building a new theater right now. I just threw that in at the end because it's the thing I'm working on currently. A bit of trivia. So if you ever find yourself in Door County, Wisconsin, come by and say hi probably sometime next year, uh, 2019, if you're watching this in the future. We'll have a, a traditional circus space up doing very interesting and weird vaudeville shows late at night. So we do have some people in the chat here. Uh, we've got es Esmeralda from Portland. She does immersive theater experiences. So welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, but, and if you have any questions during this workshop, please just let us know in the chat room because this is kind of an open discussion uh, per se. So just let us know in the chat room. And as Tom said, I will be moderating those so that uh, he doesn't get distracted. So please let us know your questions in there and I'll just ask them at the, at the proper time. And to be honest, this is probably out of the three, my favorite workshop, because this is where kind of the rubber hits the road. You've done all your printing. You've, you've, got people to get come to your show now it's how can you make money on top of your ticket sales and i think that especially here at well attended that's really what we're all about so you can sell tickets but now how do you make that extra income that as tom was saying uh yesterday he can pay for his theater just from the merchandise that he's selling 
And so that's really what I want to stress here. Not only can you make money from your sales, from your tickets, but you can also make that money with your merchandise. And that can be a huge money maker for you in your theater or as a performer. So let's just get right into this, Tom. How do you go about taking this print marketing that you've created? What do you, what types of material do you sell? What sells well for you? And how do you get people's money and get them interested in buying this? Yeah, absolutely. So, so if you're going to move from uh, using it as an ad to using it as merchandise, and especially with immersive theater, there's no reason t-shirts should be flying off the shelves in an immersive theater experience. I mean, and for, for magicians and bands, if you don't have a back of the room table filled with crap to sell, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. But even acts like me, I'm a, a sideshow performer. I'm often mistaken for a magician, but I'm a scientist. I'm the opposite of a magician. Or uh, burlesque performers, uh, folks who would just sell less merch than those two big guns in the room. Um, even if you break even, it's really good marketing. So even if I go into a venue and don't sell enough merch to really justify my time, it, it's FaceTime, it's interaction, I'm getting a chance to hand people stuff. I also have giveaways, so we'll get into talking about that. But here's the basics. You need to understand what you're going to sell, which is a process of decision. As artists, we don't often make. It's a business decision. We can't only make it from the gut, though the gut is always part of this. You need to understand how to price items. Now we're talking your X multiple, which is just retail philosophy. Then we're going to get into, now that you run a retail space, basically, you've opened a little tiny Walmart in the back of your bar that you're performing in. It becomes, where do you put the table? How do you get the money? And then I've got a little bonus for you. I've got another way to package this up where I, I'll talk about getting into packages a lot. I'm big on putting packages together. One of them that I do, I use as my VIP ticket for my merch. So I never have the problem of not selling out my VIP tickets. Doesn't happen. I have a completely different way of doing it. And I'm able to offer a ticket with a 75% margin, which allows me to cut you in. You want to go sell my tickets? Yeah, keep 30%. Every $35 ticket you sell, put whatever that is, eight and a half, nine dollars in your pocket, which means if you sell a hundred tickets, I'll pay you almost a thousand dollars. That's a heck of a payment system that I have in place because those VIP tickets have margins on them that allow me to do that. And if you're not doing that, it's it you definitely want to know it and decide not to do it. You don't want to not have that tool in your toolbox. All the uh, notes you'll need, we think. If we miss something, email us or, or message us on Facebook because we really want this to be, you don't have to take notes. Just let the information kind of waft over you. If it get this won't get too heavy. The first two could get kind of heavy for people who've never done this before. But if you get lost and you're like, oh my God, he's talking about pixels again. That was part two. I had to really dive into what pixels were. I don't understand. You can always watch it on replay, but you don't have to be taking notes because we've put show notes basically together. So look in the top right hand corner. It just it says click here in giant red letters. That's a Google address. And that's this document, which is where I got this stuff from. These are the things I'm currently using. And then down below, you'll see a black line of pending orders, not yet ordered. So those are things I'm thinking about ordering, but I wanted to go ahead and get them priced out. And then like my custom bandmerch.com t-shirts, second from the bottom there. I don't know how good those are. That's why they're below that black line. But I found t-shirts, 542 bucks and 30 cents. That's with shipping to Chicago. That's a $5 and 42 cent t-shirt. I could retail that for 10 bucks or 15 and make a 50 to 30, 60% uh, margin. Above is everything else. And I'll give you a little fair warning on any of these documents you get from me. If, for example, the very first one, the 11 by 17 is up here. I'll try to use my cursor. I got a little lag though. Forgive me. That's DocuCopies. That is the cheapest place I've found for posters and they're good quality. They're the ones I'm holding up. Right below it though is Got Print Crack and Peel stickers. Those are a little expensive. You can get them cheaper, but I really like the quality. So this is my opinion. And sometimes it's service wins over price. So it didn't always just the cheap, 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 cheapest. There's other factors, but I wanted you to have my opinion. I made this for me because what happened was uh, with my last project, it was a magician, a juggler, myself, the magician and I handled the merch and we'd be sitting on a call like this and going, where did we get postcards from two years ago? And then we had to go through our emails. So I've just made this document so you can have a copy. It'll be on Google sheets, but that's just like Excel. And it's easy to figure out from there. If you can't figure it out, just message us and we'll help you. We're going to dive right in. The first question you have to have, obviously, is, is what to sell and how to price it. That, that's just the very basic thing. Like, okay, great. I mean, I mentioned t-shirts, also mentioned posters, but I got a ton of good Lord. I'm surrounded by tchotchkes right now. I've got trading cards. I've got uh, custom matchbooks that I hand make. I've got buttons and stickers and postcards and who's it's and what's it's and tchotchkes galore. Okay. The other, pri the other question is how to price it. So there's a couple of, there's actually, I think, three major factors here. One is going to be your cost per item. 
if you're buying a t-shirt for five and a half dollars and you can only sell it at eight dollars, that's not a ton of money in your pocket. So you sell 10 and you made 30 bucks, but that might not be worth setting up a merch table for because there's five of you in the band. You all made six bucks each. Maybe it'd be better to leave it, come back to it another day. Instead, set up a table and give away cheap pieces of paper and high five and kiss babies and shake hands and make it a marketing table. But if you can find a bookmark, bookmarks are really cheap. And I found a really good price on stickers that I'll update this uh, Google Sheets with. We can get them for about a penny each for about a $150 to $200 buy-in. So that's the second factor, is that if you're going to buy 100 stickers, you're looking at a few dollars. You're really going to want to buy 1,000 for, say, 80 bucks. 80 bucks, that's not so bad. And you got a, a supply that'll last you a year or two years. But if you buy t-shirts, you're looking at $542 and you got to find a way to carry them. So you got to go to the container store and you got to spend another hundred bucks on boxes to carry them. And you got to put tape around each one for sizes, a lot going on with t-shirts. So how much is it per unit is important, but your total buy-in is important too. It doesn't do me any good to tell you, look, I can get you posters for 12 cents if you order 50,000 of them, because then that's a $5,000 buy-in for the table and that's a little too pricey the third is your gut a lot of it is asking yourself what do my people want now i think in like an immersive theater i would think t-shirts if you were a band i would think a thumb drive the modern cd is a thumb drive with your stuff on it uh for my show it tends to be posters postcards i tend to package stuff together people will buy the whole little package for 10 bucks if you're a magic show you do a magic kit right especially if there's kids i would buy a magic kit with your face on it that'd be awesome it'd be branded merchandise right some of them are kind of obvious, but you might find that your band's t-shirts, especially if you're a metal band, sell better than I can stream it on Spotify and the young people love the YouTube. So maybe you sell more t-shirts. Maybe the immersive theater actually sells their soundtrack on a thumb drive. I don't know. So a lot of it's your gut. Um, what do you find that you can sell more of? Like, the, Are the posters more popular for you? Are the buttons more popular for you? If you had to like just pick one to get started or two or three to get started, what would you pick in order to start setting up and having a merch table? It's it's tough to answer it even in hindsight because I did a package so quickly because it was only about five or six hundred bucks total to get my the package that I that I sell together, which is a little bit of everything. But I will tell you that I started with buttons and was very happy with those. Uh, now I would probably do post, uh, bookmarks, do like five or six types of bookmarks. You can do double-sided bookmarks, full color, two by six. There's bookmarks on decent little card stock. They feel like a nice little business card. They're not fancy, but they're, they're fine. Um, $75 delivered. So they're like 59 bucks plus 12 bucks shipping. So you do five of those when you get your extra $75 in your paycheck, you order another one, right? double-sided lying out on your table. You'd have 10 of them because they're double sided You look like you have 10. All five of them are a dollar fifty, And people would be thrilled to pay that. And that's a good margin uh, if I'm doing the math right in my head. So 35 cents. Yeah, you'd be making you'd be making about a buck 15 per sale. So I would probably do that. Buttons are also easy to carry, hard to destroy. That was a factor for me. You know, I could carry, I took a, a zippered bank bag like you can buy at a, a Staples. And I could carry three or 400 buttons in there and zip them up. And you really would have to crush them under something to, to damage these little, they're little uh, one inch metal pins. Uh, so I'd probably do that again, just because the buy-in was, I think two or 300 bucks to get a large volume of buttons and a $20, $15 bank back from Staples. But it's an ongoing discussion you would have. So that's, there's not even an easy answer for me. And I sell a lot of merchandise. A band would have the same thing. They would say, well, even though they, they could tell you right off the top of their head, t-shirts, t-shirts sell the best. But which design? Oh, well, that blue one sold. But then we sold a lot of the ladies' black version of this t-shirt. I don't know why. We don't have a lot of girls at our show. But man, they just flew off the shelves. It's A lot of this is um, it's instinct. It's really having that instinct, instinct for it. If you've done this kind of stuff before, most of this you've probably... Uh, heard of, but I put I threw some stuff down here with just kind of basic prices of what I'm paying, especially five dollar t-shirts. Now that's single color, single color printing, single side. It's just like your logo and fancy. Oh no, you can drop a PNG in there, so it's your text, your logo, in say yellow on a black t-shirt or blue on a white t-shirt or the back, but not the front and back. Five bucks from that that website, and then about seven to eight bucks you can get double sided and up to three colors. Once you get to eight or nine dollars per shirt. Now, I always conclude that's delivered because it does me no good to not include tax and delivery. So that was two by house in Chicago. I don't remember where they're shipping them from. It's usually very close unless you live next door to them. 
So now you've got an idea of what you want to make. And we're going to start getting into retail theory. So say you're, you've are you decided to make posters. You're going to make uh, 18 by 24 posters. You're going to make them black and white with no bleed. That means they have a little border around them like these do because these are cheaper, but not have a bleed. So I had the designer kind of make it look, I think it looks good with the, the cheaper version. I had him design it as opposed to the others where they go full bleed edge to edge with no white margins because I wanted this poster to be cheap enough to sell at a, at a good price in a package, right? So let's say I've printed a thousand of these. Uh, probably then spent about uh, 150, maybe $175. Big heavy box lands at my door and I'm ready to go. I'm going to tell you that you want to have more than one thing. That's your goal. Start with one and sell it as fast as you can. Sell as many of them as you can. And it's kind of nice to just have like buttons are a dollar. Come buy one. You can sell them right out of your pocket for a buck each. It's really nice. But try to get to where you have a varied price point And here's why. You don't want to just sell. I'll put it right here. Don't sell a CD for 20 bucks and a t-shirt for 25 and nothing else. You want to have a, this is P.T. Barnum on the right, by the way. If you don't, if you're not a circus performer, you may not recognize P.T. Barnum. Uh, he's credited with saying a lot of things he didn't say. He never said there was a sucker born every minute, but he did say, always have a little something for everyone. And that's an important phrase to me. I want to have stuff on my table. First of all, that is free. And we'll get into how I use my merch table as a marketing table, because that's an opinion. You may not want to have stuff that's free. I think you have to. Others think it kills your sales. I have stuff that's zero dollars. So when you come up and get a crisp high five, shake hands, meaningful eye contact in two seconds of time, you get a little tchotchke to take with you. Bookmarks are very cheap. Trading cards are very cheap. Stickers are very cheap. Here you go. Have a good day. I also have stuff that's a buck. Then I tend to do a few things for a dollar, something for five, something for 10, 15. And then once I get t-shirts, that'll be my 25, 30. Cause it'll be like a t-shirt and a thing two t-shirts and a sticker, and it'll be 35 bucks. But see, zero, one, a bunch in the one, because that's the most common is one to five, one, a couple of fives, a 10, a 15, a 25, a 35. So I've got everyone in my demographic covered because 35 bucks is what you paid for a ticket. And so it can be a little, you know, difficult to say, well, double your money and give me more. It's a bit weird. So you want to have a little bit of everything and don't be afraid to have a high-end package. Remember that even though, I am most often a $15 ticket here in Chicago because it's local. I don't need to charge a ton of money for you to come to the show. But that doesn't mean I don't get people who do not regularly pay for Book of Mormon, who don't regularly pay for Hamilton, who don't, don't regularly pay $85 to $90 a ticket and take a date. I'm one of those people. I go to theater. So I went to a burlesque show. This is probably three weeks ago at this point. I paid 15 bucks, or no, I paid 10 bucks to get in because I got my ticket. They had a coupon code. I paid 10 bucks. And I spent 15 or $20 in merchandise before I left. I spent more on my t-shirt and their little, their little fun handmade tchotchkes than I did for my ticket because I want to support the show. So it's very important to have, this is what's called product mix. If you get into retail, it's having a little something for everyone. These are still just retail theories. The problem is as artists, we don't realize when you start doing merchandise that you've opened a retail location and it sucks. I don't want a job in retail or I would have gone to Target and asked for a job in retail. I would have gone to Apple and asked to sell Macintosh. I didn't want to uh, open a retail location and that's fine to choose not to do it. You don't have to. This is extra money. It doesn't have to be how you make your living. So you can try it and bail. That's perfectly fine. But if you're going to have a merch table in the back of the room, well, then, you know, take it seriously. Do it properly. There's nothing wrong with working hard and doing it right, in my opinion, even though you hate, don't get me wrong, I hate every second of calling clients. I hate every second of the sales in the back of the room. I do it because I like the job. I like the job overall. You know, I want the client to have FaceTime with me. I want, you know, that kind of stuff. Most often I see performers misunderstanding this, this multiple. It's because they worked in retail and they heard from their manager or their boss, or maybe they were the manager or the boss, that they have a 4X retail multiple. And what that means is you multiply it by four. So if I pay 25 cents for it, I sell it for 100 cents, right? So I sell it for a dollar. And that's because this will then kind of become my 10 to 15% profit margin because all of this is the space, the people, the lights, the licensing, et cetera. But we don't have all those expenses. When you open a food truck, you use a different multiple than you would if you were a restaurant location because you have different expenses and they can be lower. First of all, a food truck costs $100,000 and you own it. A restaurant costs $1.2 million. You're never going to own it. So retail is a lot of different costs. If you've ever owned a retail location or managed a small time shop and had to see them write all the checks, 
I mean, you got to pay rent every month. I've never paid rent on my merch table ever. I've had a few venues who want to taste. They want to get their beak wet and charge me a percentage. And I've talked them out of it every time. So I've never had anybody charge me anything to put my table up. My table is a benefit. You're welcome that I have it. It's a meet and greet table. And it's a, it's a feature. It's, it's not just a way to make money. But I never have to pay rent. I don't pay for lights or gas. I don't pay for licensing. Um, I'm never on the street selling this stuff. So maybe I'd have to get a merchant's license, but it's never come up. If I pay for labor, it's I pay a buddy of mine and usually they're doing it as a favor and I'll hook them up and work their table as a favor. Or maybe I take them out for dinner. The most I've ever paid someone is 50 or hundred bucks for the entire day to come in and work my table. And that's because we're doing multiple days. And I felt like, dude, that's not a favor. Let me, let me pay you. That's, that's too much work. Insurance, none of that. You don't pay that. So use a two or three X multiple. That's why when I said buy t-shirts for five and a half dollars, sell them for 10. That's really cheap for a t-shirt. Yeah, you're welcome. Give me $10. That's a 40% profit margin, almost 40, 40, 45. Awesome. We both win. That's the perfect thing. Pass the savings along to you. So make sure you're using a two or three X multiple because you don't want to be buying bookmarks for a dollar and selling them for $5 when you could sell three of them for $5 and still have a good margin. When I talk about margins, uh, if you look on the right, those are my margins. It says uh, profit margin. So you see t-shirt. If I buy it for five, I sell it for 10. That's easy math. That's 50%. And so you've got to learn some of this stuff. You've got to learn price mix, unfortunately. You've got to learn product mix. You've got to learn about your two to three X multiple. It's not a lot, but you need to just know it. And it's not exciting for us. I'm much more excited to write a show. Um, and then the profit divided by retail cost is your, there's your calculation for profit margins. Flip that and you've got, if you want to calculate your product cost, so if my margin is 50%, my cost is 50%. If my margin is 85%, my cost is 15%. You just flip that around, you get the other number. I tend to think in the way of margins, but maybe you think of costs. You know, I think that's great. I make 90% off that. And you think, oh, that's great. It only costs me 10%. Whatever. However your brain works. You'll hear me talk about packages a lot. I really like packaging things up. Um, I don't, I do like, now this one I've kind of broken apart. Forgive me. This is a package, but I took pieces out of it <laughs> to show you today. Um, so you would buy this whole bag of stuff, and there's four posters, a full color eight page, a oh, beautiful program, a uh, collectible program. There's two different trading cards in there. There's two double sided bookmarks, a four by six print. And uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I don't know what. Oh, I'll throw a business card in there. That doesn't really count. That's just how you contact me on social media. And a beautiful carrying case, which is the plastic bag. And I sell that for 10 bucks. And I did that because I wanted to have a $10 item and I don't have t-shirts yet. I don't have t-shirts because they're bulky to carry and I'm a very light, small, nimble show. If I were in a band, I would definitely have a, an ATA case full of t-shirts, but it's a lot to carry. I also have a little VIP bag that has all that, but without the posters. Um, you could throw in buttons and stickers and stuff. Just watch your costs. This gives you an ability to have a bunch of what should be $1 items. Package them all together, knock five bucks off the top and say, look, I've got, see what I mean? So these packages don't just help your customers. These packages also allow you to control your costs. You put a t-shirt with a bunch of, uh, I'm going to use bookmarks as an example, but stickers, the, the lower, not buttons, not custom pens. Those are in the 30, 40% cost. The stuff that's the bottom, the stuff that costs you a few pennies and you can sell it for a buck. You can sell it for 50 cents if you wanted to easily. Put a bunch of those with your t-shirt. And then sell that for 15. And then people are still impressed. 15, man, most t-shirts at a show cost 20 or 25. That's a good deal. I'm going to get that. All the bookmarks and the two trading cards and a t-shirt's 20 bucks. Please and thank you. Now your t-shirt's 50. Everything else is 5% costs. And you see your costs come down to like 35%. So this helps you as a business person. But I'll argue that it also really helps me as a customer. I love a deal. And I'm not a haggler. I'm not that guy. I can't do that. I never in my life. I find I'm an American and we find haggling just disturbing and disgusting. It's like talking about what you make as a salary at dinner time. It is not appropriate. But I do love a deal. I love a deal. I love a bargain. So when you create these packages, this merch table's for me and them. It isn't just a way for me to rob them of money. It completes a customer cycle. When I go to a show and I like the show, I want a tchotchke to take home with me. I want the souvenir mug. I want the t-shirt. If you're a band, I want to buy your CD. One, because your band may be badass and I love the music, but also your band may be really good. And I really want to support you guys. I paid five bucks to get in. There's like 20 of you on stage. I got four bands. Each has four people in it. 
There's no way you made money off my five bucks. There's no way this bar is paying you a percentage of my beer. Let me buy a t-shirt for 25 bucks and throw in a thumb drive. Oh, I'm thrilled. I got to give you some extra money that I know for a fact goes right into your pocket because that's your girlfriend or boyfriend working the merch table. You're not paying them. They are clearly almost in the band. Uh, so it's also for the customer. Don't think of your merch table as just a retail outlet. You're not just being a greedy bastard, I promise. So when you bundle these items together, think of them. Do not just put together a package and not do what I did, which was say, save 20%. If you buy two t-shirts, I throw in both CDs for free. You can get to both of our tour t-shirts and every song I've ever recorded right here. And it's $42. See what I mean? So they're like, oh, well, I get all the music. You get every song I've ever put to music for free if you buy two t-shirts. Oh, well, okay, that then. I feel like I got a deal and I was able to pay you. So when you do that with packages, this will be important when you do the signage. $10 saves $5. Buy this, get this free. We like that stuff. Play with us. It's fun. It's a fun game. It's my version of haggling. I think cultures that haggle have fun haggling. And I gave some examples here because product makes it still important. So you got a dollar thing, $5 things, $10 thing, 15. Like I said before, you also have packages, $5 package, $15 package, $35 package. I do buy the whole table. I always have a price that's buy the whole table. So if I got one of everything, how much would it be? Because I get this question. That's why I started putting everything together, by the way. Someone told me what the customers wanted. They said, well, how much for just one of all of it? I did the math in my head and knocked three bucks off. When I, uh, $12? Okay. Boom. And then later on, when I did the math, I was wrong. 10 bucks is a fair price for me. That's that swag bag. So make sure when you create packages, you're still keeping in mind product mix. But packages are so incredibly important for you and them. And I can't make that point enough because a lot of times people think that this type of sales is just uh, a money grab. But if I go to your magic show with my kid, man, and you just destroy the room, you wreck the place, you kill. My kid is in love with you. My kid's like, daddy, I, I want to learn some magic tricks. That was really cool. And I'll walk up afterwards and for $35, you have a magic kit with your face on it. And you're, and it's not just slum crap. You're like, no, this is the first kit I got. And it's just some cheap plastic, but it contains miracles. Let me show you. And my kid leaves with that, with his arms, like it's Christmas morning. You can't make a bigger fan than a happy dad or a happy mom. Think of your merch like that. It's a way to complete a customer cycle. Unfortunately, you do have to sell it. You have to package it. You have to price it. You have to think like a dirty, dirty, grubby business person. Um, I want to get into selling merch, and this is where I want uh, William to share his screen because I want to show you uh, so two real big places to sell merch. One is, yeah, back of the table in a room, which we're getting to next. But the other one was unique to, I think, unique to Well Attended. It's the only time I've ever seen it is on Well Attended. Uh, and I thought this was great because I put my merch up on my website, but it, it didn't really sell. And then I used this feature, and I sold... Uh, I don't even remember how many, but uh, uh, more than I thought. Right. Uh, what was it? I sold like two or three a night in advance. And so people are coming to the show for the first time and have already bought merchandise. And it was coincidentally, I pre-sold about what my rent cost, which was nice because that meant that every ticket I sold that night was profit in my pocket. But show and what I'm talking said, about and then I'll explain how, how it worked for me. You also said that people came to the theater like a couple, they had only bought one. And the other cup, the other, uh, can you explain that? that story? Oh yeah. So I thought, so what William's going to demonstrate is when you buy a ticket on his, on his website, on his, on well attended, right. During, during the checkout process, it'll ask you if you'd like to add on some other stuff and you can put in whatever you want. You can say, do you want to add a bottle of wine or would you like to buy our album? You know? So I put this swag bag on a fluke. I put, would you like a bag? I think I even put like bag of crap. Would you like the swag bag or fabulous bag of crap, including, and I listed some things. So I clearly wasn't trying that hard to sell them because I thought what would happen was this. You buy a ticket. How'd you hear about us? At Facebook or I saw a poster. Okay. Would you like to buy a fabulous bag of crap? Well, that's funny. You know, I, don't, I haven't seen the show. What if the show sucks? I don't want to take home a bunch of your face if it shows garbage. So, okay, no, thank you. But then I planted in their brain was what I liked about it. And then when they arrived, the guy or lady had said to their date, hey, make sure you bring some cash with you. I think this dude sells stuff after the show. And if I like it, I do want to, if I go to your palace show and like it, I do want to buy a t-shirt. So I thought to bring some cash, or I take cards, but it's, it's easier. It primes them. Then when they see me afterwards at my merch table, oh, that's the bag of crap you were talking about. And now that I like the show, I would absolutely love this bag of fabulous junk 
for $10. What a bargain. I thought I'd be using it like that. I had 25 to 30% of my, so each one's a couple, right? 30% of the pairs buying a bag of crap between them. So they were coming to the theater having given me 35 bucks each plus $10 in basically pure profit before they walked in the door. Then as they walked out the door, a good half of those who had already bought, so sample from that half, came up and they say, say the, the guy made the pick, ticket purchase. It was a guy's name. It was Robert, blah, blah, blah. He shows up with a lady. Okay, that's your, that must be your plus one. Thanks for coming. Here's your bag of stuff. Thank you. So your seats are in there. On the way out, let me, can we get one more of these? And so then I sold them another bag of swag, which, because now they'd seen the show. It never in a million years occurred to me that people would buy the album before hearing, in this case, that's a bad analogy because you could hear the album. Like you're going to go see a play that's brand new and you bought a t-shirt in advance, but like, what if the play sucks? Then you're stuck with this terrible t-shirt you wear ironically. So run through the demo and people will see what I'm yeah. talking about, about it goosing them. So here's the well-attended homepage. So whenever you create an account with us and you go to sell tickets, uh, this is a customizable page where it shows an image for your organization. And if we scroll down here, it shows all of your upcoming dates and times. So let's just go ahead and pretend like we're buying tickets here to the Taming of Judge Roy Bean. So we're gonna click Order Now. And once we click Order Now, we've got another image up here at the top that's customizable, info about the show. But we're just gonna scroll down here and let's go to the show on the second at 8 p.m. So we click this here. Now this is something I don't think Tom's touched on, but uh, we've got a VIP package. So this is the first way you could do this. You could create a VIP package. And in this case, this would be premium front row seating, a signed poster from the cast and crew, and a glass of wine. So this is the first way that you can upsell your product. And you can see here, you can add 20 bucks in our case, more for that first row plus a swag bag. And that swag bag's 10 bucks by itself if they were to just buy it in the back of the back of the room. So this is one way to do this, is just creating package deals so you can make more money. But was, what Tom was talking about is, let's go ahead and add uh, two general admission tickets in the cart. This is what Tom was talking about here. Once we click add to cart, you're gonna see this little pop-up light box that says optional charge. Would you like to add this to your order? And this is where you can start creating your products and selling your merch. So right now we've got a signed poster from the cast and that's $5. So let's say, yeah, I do want this. I can click add. Now, once I click add, I have a choice of adding multiples to this. So if it's a couple, we wanna buy two posters, we can add them to the cart. For now, let's just add one right here and we save it to the cart. And now you can see we've got the ticket to the show. Right below it, we've got a signed poster and that's being added right over here. And that's how easy it is. So as Tom was saying, not only are you priming people to let them know that after the show, I've got some product to sell, but if they already know who you are or your swag bag or whatever it is you're so selling sounds interesting, they can buy it right here. And then in your attendee list, you're gonna get a notification uh, that says the person's name, and then you're gonna be able to click on them and see what products they've bought from you. So when they arrive either uh, before the show, you can give them the swag bag. Or at the end of the show, you say, hey, and if you've already bought the swag bag online, come on over, see me at the table, and I'll give it to you before you leave. So there's kind of two ways you can handle it. But on your attendee list, uh, let me just show you what this looks like. Here's Here we have the, all of the attendee lists. If I just go to view here, I can click on someone's name, and it will tell me if they bought something right here, this person didn't. But it'll tell you right here that this person bought swag and how many they bought so that you'll be ready at the door with that information. Uh, so yeah, so back over to you, Tom. Hopefully this explains how this cool feature works with us. Well, one thing that I did just as a marketing idea was, and I, I didn't take this seriously. I really just threw it up there because I, I thought it would just be like an ad and then they would get to the show and then I would sell them the bag of stuff. Like that's usually what happens. You come to the show, never heard of the band in my life, didn't do any research. They were opening for the band I came to see, fell in love, went and got a CD or t-shirt from the opening act. This happened a bunch of times in my life where, because it turns out that opening act will be a headliner in five years. They, they, everyone was seeing what I saw, which was like, this band's amazing. Okay. So I thought that's what would happen. Uh, later I started doing a thing that's 10 bucks. It's five bucks if you buy a ticket. So if you buy it through well attended, you get the swag bag for half. See that beat that deal. So that you bargain. could put in parentheses there. Uh, after the show bag will be, 
ten dollars. So you yeah. could even tell everybody if you buy this right now, it's five. After the show, it's ten. So you you've got that flexibility to really uh, have that say whatever you'd like that to say. So if you want to try to push those sales at the front, you can. You can also do. There was a burlesque performer who would print things. She would sell them at the show and then send them to you later. That way she didn't have to print 10,000. She only printed the numbers she needed. She printed them locally. So maybe you could use that same thing where you could say, would you like a bottle of wine? And then a limited edition. Like if you don't buy it right now, I'm, I'm making them this week and bring them to the show is what you're saying. Basically right now you have a chance to order a limited handmade, blah, blah, blah. That is not for sale any other time. And maybe that $10 becomes this amazing, like handmade Etsy type thing that your cast and crew can produce that's waiting for me and you it's done. That's it. This is the show. No one else can get it. I had the foresight to buy in advance and you're training your regulars to really look through that shopping list. Cause last time they missed out, like you had handmade pasties that were included and they were like six bucks and they were really neat and you didn't get them. You missed out. That FOMO is a powerful thing. It's a powerful mojo, man. Yeah. So we talk about selling stuff online, which is a great way to do it. So you can sell them in advance, but the majority of people who bought stuff and even I would say almost half the people who bought in advance wanted to come to a table and see me. So we got to set up a table. You got to set up your, your well-attended site or your website, your merchandise online it has to be mobile friendly with beautiful photographs and easy way to take payments, et cetera. So does your table. I get a little drill sergeant on this stuff where I'm like, look, do it right. Just do it right. Why are you doing it wrong? Uh, it's the old curmudgeonly dad in me. Uh, work hard. Come on, man. Mow the lawn. Get off my lawn. The table's your store. So uh, we tend to get kind of lazy as artists with everything that is in our show, including our relationships and our ability to stop drinking. But seriously, your, your table is your retail location. Take pride in it. For me, my table directly represents my show. I refer to it as a marketing table. I, I don't refer. I think of it as that. So the merchandise is not even half the battle. For me, 80% of the reason you're there is that little bit of FaceTime that I want with artists I like. I want to walk up to a nobody, a dude I just saw on stage at an improv show or a stand-up comedian I've never heard of. He's just like me. He's a nobody, right? I paid five or 10 bucks. I saw the show, loved it. Such a good show. Such a funny lady. Such a talented guy. Oh my God. I want to just crisp by five, shake the hand. Hey man, that was really good. Thank you. I want that as a customer. So I offer that to my customers. It's a chance for you to walk by and I feel so stupid and douchey being like that, but it's like a chance for you to tell me how great it was. But I know from the other side that I wanted that opportunity and as awkward as it feels for me, and it does feel very awkward for me. I promise. I try and smile like a politician up there. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. No, you too. No, you, no, you baby. All right. But you have to give it to them. So if I'm going to have that representing my show, well, just the way I care about the stage, the seats, the parking lot, the marquee, the lights, is my shirt pressed? Is my costume neat? How's my hair look? Blah, blah, blah. I got to do the same thing with my show. Well, I'm sorry, with my table because it's part of my show. So what matters? Well, a bunch of things. But if you look at this one, I picked this one specifically. I just typed into Google uh, band merch tables or something. And I found this one. And if you really, when you get these slides, because you get all these slides, by the way, it's not just the Google Docs, everything. Zoom in on this and really look. This person is doing it right. My God, are they doing it right? Uh, I can't find a mistake here. So what have they got? Well, the first one I write is a, is a, is a realtor's joke. Location, location, location. The three things that matter in, in real estate is location, location. Because it's, it's like they're trying to be funny. Uh, but in the case of your merge table, it is very important. When I was looking around for experiences, because my experience with merchandise has been very positive, but I'm a theater guy. And we're delicate and we're treated delicately and we're treated very nicely. Uh, the worst thing that happens to a theater person is we're kind of ignored. The owner just gives us the keys and leaves. But these musicians work for bar owners who are legendary at being just jerks. Uh, so they'll try and put your merch table under the stairs. They'll try and just move it out of the way. And if they can't find you, they can't buy from you. And in my case, if they can't find me, they can't buy from me. But more importantly, no Chris by five. No, thanks for coming. No, no, you drive safe. You know what I mean? Oh, see, oh, thanks, man. I probably saw it last. Oh, thank you. Really? Oh, you never seen it? So that really scared you then. I want that. I want that little bit of FaceTime with them because I feel like they want it with me or else they wouldn't be standing at my table. They're not trapped. They walk up to me. I've had a couple of occasions in a theater where they wanted me to set up my merch table in a location that I did not think was ideal. And I pushed back a little bit. Now, don't make this the hill you die on. I didn't want to piss off my client. But I did say, would it, would it be okay if I put it 
somewhere else. They can't really see it. And what I do after the show is it's like my meet and greet table. So it's not just like I'm hawking CDs. I sign things. I've got giveaways, but it's also Q and a mailing list stuff, but it's people hang out. Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it, what it was, was one time I'm thinking about, they didn't think they went, Oh yeah, put it over there. And then they went, Oh no. Yeah, you're right. I don't care. Put it wherever you want. They didn't care. So they just pointed to a spot just to give me an answer, just to make me feel better. Turns out they don't give a crap. I can put my table wherever I wanted to. So I moved it right by the door and they went, yeah, yeah, that's much better. Right. That way they can all see you as they go out. Boom. So always don't be afraid to give a little tap, <laughs> a little tap and point out this is a better location. And I find that if you don't say so, so mama can make more money. If you say so, the customer can have a better experience in some verbiage. I mean, we're performers. Don't you have charisma? Aren't you good at BSing? Use it. Use your slick cars salesman like skills. Use your feminine wiles. Use your good looking actor leading Hamlet. Use it, man. Walk up and go, hey, just uh, wondering if maybe there was a way we could uh, work out. Yeah, try it. Why not? If you got to, fine. Put me in the corner. Put me under the stairs. That's probably why they have this amazing table. Have clear signage. Uh, get some lights. I love the signage on this on this this table. If you ask how much something is, I don't have my glasses on. This thing is like this big on my screen. And I can tell you on the left, there's a $45 t-shirt, 25, 20, 10. Ooh, I like that product mix. $10 t-shirt and a four. I bet that's the old tour t-shirt is 10 bucks. The current tour t-shirt's 45. But they got product mix just on the back wall. Haven't even looked on the table yet. And I see one, two, three indicators that they take credit cards. Two up top, left and right, and then go down below the one on the right, right on that table, another sign. And then again, 15, I see 15, I see, I see uh, 25, I see a dollar right next to the credit card sign. Boom, baby, killing it. Product mix. I don't see packages, but I'll guarantee you, if you talk to whoever's behind that table, if you buy two of the current tour t-shirts, I'll throw in one of those black t-shirts in the middle that are 10 bucks from last year. Something. There's some kind of deal on this table. Clear signage, looks beautiful, looks amazing. Don't know what band this is but I'm not completely disinterested in finding out if they take their table this seriously. I wonder how good their album is. Certainly the show is good. If you like that kind of music, uh, get to your merch booth right after the show. These are just kind of tips I got from people. A lot of them are from bands cause they really take it seriously, but this appeals to me particularly be at your merch table right after the show. A lot of times when I'm coming off stage, I'm using found spaces as theaters. So I have to walk through the audience and I'll get caught right off stage with, Hey, can I just get a picture real quick? And that kind of forms a pile of people. Oh, me too, me too, me too. And now we have photos going. So now what I do, even if I'm not selling anything that night, even if I don't want to do a merch table, I have a big like pull out uh, banner, freestanding banner. And I go, yeah, yeah, come over here. And I got a thing that we'll do. We'll do a thing together. And I've got torches behind that banner. So I'll light a torch and, ah, behind your head while you take a selfie. And my banner's behind us like a, like a step and repeat. But more importantly, when I am selling merch, it, it moves the party and I'm not just being a jerk. Like, no, oh, let's do it. But let, I got, I got a thing. Come here, come here, come here. And like the Pied Piper, I leave them on my, my merch table. So that's one trick I found. The biggest trick is just while the MC's talking, move around. He goes, any hey, guys, if you want William Raiders back there, he's got a mailing list. He's got CDs for sale. He's got his own little magic kit and he'd love to meet you guys. He's also got free stuff. He gave me one of these. It's really cool. It's like, it's how to, it's how to read minds. A little magic trick you can do. I'm going to freak out my girlfriend later. Thanks for coming. Drive safe. Good night. If you're a burlesque performer, my friend Victoria pointed this out to me. Uh, you may need a couple minutes to put some clothes back on before you want to go to your merch table because you're basically naked. Uh, maybe a robe isn't quite enough. You don't feel quite safe in a pile of people wearing just a robe and some pasties and a G string and a beautiful smile. Make sure you let the MC know, Hey, my merch table's back there. It's also a marketing meet and greet thing buy me about 45 seconds and, and maybe make a joke about it. And let her put some clothes on. She'll be back there and meet you. Have some freebies. I put in a, a question mark because it, it really is strongly my opinion that you need to have some giveaways, but my merch table is also a marketing table. I really do make enough money off the fee and off the ticket sales. I'm not like a band where I try and make a minimum guarantee and then I'll make it up in merchandise later. If that's your business model, maybe you don't want to have freebies. Maybe giving stuff away devalues the things you're selling for a dollar. That's a debate I've heard, and it's not a dumb, it's not a dumb counter to my point. It really isn't. I hear you. Decide what you're going to be doing at your table and maybe switch it out. Maybe sometimes you have freebies, sometimes you don't. Maybe sometimes I'm well attended. If you want a freebie, you can tell them when you buy a ticket. Would you like a free poster? Because I'm only bringing the number. Yeah, I would like a free poster and you to sign it. Thank you. Zero dollars. Put your marketing front loaded. Play with it. 
Always have people sign a mailing list. I recommend currently, because William and I both tried pieces of paper and I cannot read your handwriting. I can't read anyone's handwriting. I lose 80%, 75% are just, they wasted their time and I feel terrible. Like, why did I bother you to get on a mail? I can't read that. And one so, way around that is uh, one of the guests on our podcast, uh, he said, uh, have a handwriting competition. Just yeah. tell everybody that signs up, hey, whoever's got the best, uh, the neatest handwriting, they're going to win uh, another swag bag or whatever it is that you have. That way, everybody will write super clear. And then when you transfer those to your mailing list, you'll be actually able to read that. And he was actually saying for a theater, when they come into the lobby, say sign up during intermission, we're gonna have a giveaway. If you sign up for the mailing list, then uh, whoever has the best handwriting, you'll get a glass of wine on us for intermission. And I think that's a great idea too. Yeah, try anything, try anything. Cause it really is just the worst. It makes me feel terrible. Cause I've, I feel like I've bothered you and then neither of us got anything out of it. Like I feel terrible. At least if you were on my mailing list, I send you discount tickets or I get something out of it. But like, I felt like, ah, not only I bother you, but like it was a waste of everybody's time. Uh, apps are a good way. So here's my new way of doing it. Do you have that widget? Uh, yep, I got it okay. right here. So this is MailChimp, but I mean, use whoever you want. They're not paying us to do a YouTube video. You sign up, you put your email address, your first name, last name, boom. You just hand them your phone. They do that. What I started doing, because the idea of handing someone my phone, which is, you know, 800 bucks, uh, terrifies me. So I found for $35, a kiosk is what you search for. I put my iPad mini in this metal frame and lock it. And then it can be tethered to, I don't know, my leg, the table, a rabid dog, but I can lock it down. Yeah. And then I have an iPad mini and you type it yourself. And then, and that'll cut down on that nonsense. But MailChimp has an app for iOS. It's a proper like full screen. If you triple click in iOS, it locks it. So without a passcode, they can't go and start looking through your pictures. Triple I didn't know that. That's super cool. You may need to turn it on in settings, but I think it's on by default. Triple click on your phone, your iPad, whatever. It'll pop up that and you can have certain areas. So if you can do it with your kids, hand them a game and they can't start going through iTunes and buying stuff is what it's for. But it's called kiosk mode, I think, or display mode. If you want to Google it, message me and I'll send you the link how I found it. Triple click that sucker, type in my passcode. Now you can't, and people aren't trying to rob my phone. They, oh, guys closed it. Crap, what's the app called? And so I wanted to stop them from doing that. It was, they were, they were accidentally messing it up. Not a big deal. But you want to have a mailing list. I've heard 25 bucks per name for some value. Uh, my mailing list over the last 365 days, and I can track some of this, uh, is right at $2,000 in sales off my mailing list alone. And it's a, still a free account for MailChimp because I have less than whatever, you know the number, William, because you're paying them. Uh, 2,500 <laughs> names, 1,500 names? Uh, I think it's like 2,500, I believe. It's either 1,500 or 2,500. I don't, I don't even quite think a bit I have before you 400 have people. Yeah. I don't think I have 400 people on my mailing list. So I'm well in the free zone and I made a couple of grand off of it. So it's something to invest in. And all I do is send them announcements of a tour and then ticket discounts. I don't blog on my email list. And that's something that I think a lot of people, it's kind of something that a lot of people think that they have to have a big list in order to make a lot of money from. But really it's the quality of the list and not the amount of people that you have on the list. You know, I joke with Tom a lot because we, with Well Attended and certain markets that we have a, a large amount of people, we send out emails for everybody that's bought tickets through Well Attended. So we have a little chat box. Hey, do you want to receive emails about Well Attended, about other shows in your area? And I always kind of joke with Tom, hey, every time, because we're paying for these big lists that we have. And I tell Tom every time, like, I hope people unsubscribe. I hope the people that aren't interested just unsubscribe from the list because we're paying for those. I would much rather have a list of 200 people or 400 people. And every time I send an email, they reply to me. They say, hey, thanks for sending this to me. I'm so interested in these shows. And they buy tickets. I would much rather have a list of 400 or 200 than a list of 1,000 where maybe you know, 40 people on that list actually take action and the rest, they just hit the spam button or they just delete it immediately. But I don't know that, right? I would much rather have a smaller list and have it uh, be, uh, have those people be taking action on that. So I guess I'm saying if you're just starting out, you've got a list of 50 people, you've got a list of 100 people, don't worry because these people hopefully will be all about you. And when you send them that email, uh, they'll want to come to your shows. They'll want to support you. And that's why I think Tom has been able to make so much money. All of these people, he knows personally. He's met them. He's shaken them their hands. He's given them high fives. So his list is very well qualified for what he is selling them. Yeah, everybody on my list is either a dear friend who just when I first posted on Facebook, took pity on me and said, look, I live in Ireland, but I'll sign up for your stupid mailing list. 
uh, or uh, customers. Yeah, they were at the merch table and they, you know, and so they got it from a ticket or they got added through ticketing. You know, they buy a ticket. I put them on the mailing list and send them like a, hey, are you cool with me putting you on a mailing list? Click here. If not, so I also get to opt out. I give them the chance of bailing because, yeah, bail. I don't, you know, if I don't want to, I don't want to bother anybody. I do want to sell you crap, but I don't want to be a jerk about it. Like, right. I'm not, I'm not right. that guy. Like, it's fine. I want you to come to my show, but I want you to have a good time. I want you to buy my t-shirt, but I don't want to shove it in your face. Buy my junk. Like, you know, I want to be nice. Um, and then the last two are just, are just pet peeves of mine. If you're going to sell a table, I know we're artists. I know we're allowed to be flighty and stoned the entire time we're at our table, but friggin' don't. Uh, I go to a lot of, I talked about this last podcast too. I go to a lot of like death metal and hardcore metal. I know I don't like the type. I look like a young Republican. I go to a lot of hardcore metal shows and, um, these guys and, and, and ladies are back behind a table looking like someone you'd never hire in your life. They're covered in makeup and piercings and tattoos and never once have they failed to have change or a card reader handy. I mean, it is the slickest of business people. Uh, they've got their crap together. And they don't look like the type. They don't play that part either. They they're not trying to look. They're not trying to look all together and wear the costume of the man. They're back there in a ton of leather with long greasy hair. Hey, how you doing, man? Oh yeah, thanks. Oh cool, yeah. No, yeah, I gotta see here. Yeah, uh, fifteen bucks. And then bam, there comes the change. That's five, ten, it's twenty. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Or swipe. Or yeah, yeah, Angie, you got the credit card. Just give your card to Angie. She'll ring you up. Bam, every single time. So if if Folks who are coming up from the bottom, aspiring can do it. We can do it. Uh, Squareup.com. If you haven't seen those readers before, there's other solutions. If you know someone who runs a bank uh, and then change is just good old American cashola. If you're in this country, go get, and you kind of vary it. I've run out of change before, but it's because I did unexpectedly high sales. I brought 150 bucks in fives and tens and everybody had cash. I don't know why it's 2017 in this case. Why has everyone got 20s with them? Bam, 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 bam. Oopsie. But in that case, people saw that I was busy. And when I went to the box office to ask if they had any cash, could they make some change for me? They didn't feel like, oh, this jerk, this amateur, this idiot. He's too high to go get money at the bank before he comes to his job. There, I said, everybody's got 20s. They go, yeah, it's weird. Everybody's paying cash tonight. Your audience likes cash. Fine. Boom. I'll take Bitcoin. I don't care. What do you got? Small children, livestock. It's all valuable to me. Gold bullion. Try it. So have your change. It's called a bank is the term we'll use. Have your bank ready. And now you got a security because now you're carrying 400 bucks on you. Be careful walking out of a club like me at 2 a.m. Uh, especially if you drink. See, I don't drink. So if you're walking out of a club and you're actually, I'm not joking, you're actually high, be careful. Have some friends with you. You know, don't get mugged. And then accept credit cards. Uh, credit cards can be difficult because you lose a little money, but really the convenience is, is a factor you, you need that. You, you, you don't want the person to say, Hey, I want to buy this right now. And you're like, well, the ATM is across the street at the seven. And now they're like, well, maybe I don't want it that bad. I'll, I'll go to the seven 11. Then they don't come back. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy that never carries cash either. I, I'm not, I'm a cashless dude, man. I got, I got a watch that'll pay you. I got two cards on me that pay you. I'm sorry. Like I don't I have one card. That's good for international one. Good. That's one card. That's got low rates for a local, but I don't have any American money on me and I don't want to go. I don't want to carry it. I want to go to the ATM but I'm the guy that buys merch. I love my merch. Like my whole house is just souvenirs and tchotchkes. Like I love that crap. I like supporting the arts. So I'm the kind of guy you want at your table. Just figure out a way to liberate my money from the tyranny of my pocket and into the wonderful freedom that is your pocket. Uh, now we'll get into some just, so this is, I call it running the merch table, but it's just a list of here's some tips. These things just didn't fit in anywhere else. Uh, a lot of these come from my own experience. And then a bunch of them come from just really cool blogs. I found about mu uh, musicians. Uh, they are really excellent at selling merch. Um, some things you'll just need to do, and some of these suck. You got to keep track of sales. Now, that's my wife's an accountant, so we really track the sales. But if you didn't uh, date and marry an accountant, uh, okay, one easy way is just count the box. So this was something I got from uh, bands. You know, they're on the road. And part of the reason they're on the road, a lot of times, especially when you're starting out, they're there to party and perform. It's kind of a break-even scenario. If I can just go out, and live on the road in the van and come back spreading my music, making money isn't really their primary, making fans is their primary goal, right? So they don't want to do a bunch of inventory. It's not a thing they're into, and it's not, they're not even really trying to make a lot of money, just break even. So an easy way was take your box of CDs, count how many's in there before you go on the road, fill it up, how many's that hold, masking tape on the top, write the number, and then every night when you get back to the hotel, real quick, count it, write that number, and that'll show you sales. You want to get real smart with it, write a date. 
I don't know why you're not using your phone. Maybe that blog was just older. But every time you go on tour, count the t-shirts. Or if you're in a theater space, count your t-shirts that night. And then end of the night, at any point between 1 a.m. and you know 5 p.m. when you open the next day, count your t-shirts in your phone, have a date. And then later on, get a Google Sheet, get Excel, make formulas and spreadsheets and get people involved and track your sales. But you need to know what's selling and what's not. You need to know how much stuff you have. And more importantly, if you're a band, you need to know, we ran out of CDs last night. We we're super popular and didn't expect that. Oh no, we have no CDs to sell tonight. And you need to have no seen that coming a few days ago. So someone could drop ship you or whatever. You need to restock. Uh, bring some lights for dark venues or dark corners. I found this on Amazon for 30 bucks. You can buy, sorry, not for 30 bucks, five or six bucks. You can buy a 30 foot string of LEDs. These cheap LEDs, they come out of China and Korea. Two companies make them. And they're, that's why I buy them from those companies. There's no point buying from a reseller. Only two of them are making them. They're the cheapest crap in the world. What's cool is if you cut them on the line at any point, now everything on the other side is now garbage. So you can turn a 30 foot string into an eight foot string because the more you've got extra, the more battery you're burning. And what I want to do is on the other end is a USB and I plug it into my phone charger. I bought one of those milliamp, uh, 15,000 milliamp batteries from Anchor, 30, 40 bucks. But that's my laptop, my phone, everything charger. I carry in my backpack, right? Plug it in. The thing I haven't had to run out. I mean, it lasts at least two or three hours. That's how long my merch table is up. But I've got lights and I've got more than one hole in the anchor. So I've got more than one string of lights going on. And then I bought these clip lights, they're LED clip lights that I would need to break out my other battery that's in the car, but I could plug it. And all that's a rolling table that is not connected to anything. So I'm mobile, I'm agile. And that's a total of, well, the two batteries I could justify because I already owned the extra, my old battery and then I upgraded to a bigger, newer battery. So I like carrying spare batteries with me for conventions and theater work. But maybe you're going to spend, okay, that's 70 bucks. And if you don't use them ever, then you've kind of just paid 70 bucks for it. But then the lights cost me a total of like $11 with Amazon Prime free shipping. And it took me, I don't know, an hour to rig it up and cut them and tape them into place. And I put a little like dimmer tubing on them. So I recommend you keep it light and portable as a result. I like to move it around, but I'm also a one-man show. I got to haul this crap in, haul this crap out. I'm already hauling in 80 pounds of broken glass and a Tesla coil. I don't need to be hauling in 200 pounds of t-shirts. That's why I don't sell t-shirts. That's why I sell paper products. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're a one woman show and you're a four foot nine woman who weighs 95 pounds, maybe bringing 200 pounds of product with you is a bad idea. Or maybe you're a super powerful little tiny chick. Think about that though. Do you work out every day? Do you want to haul stuff upstairs? A lot of venues I play are upstairs in these little black boxes. I'm six, one, 200 pounds. Uh, it's a haul for me. So I can, you know, keep that, you know, great, big, great, big out of shape, dude. You gotta, you gotta, you know, know, know who you are. Don't, you know, don't, don't get too ambitious. The last one I read on a blog and I just like, this one's completely out of left field and I love it. They said, take their cash, even if it isn't enough. And this was something I was already doing. So in their scenario, a guy walks up the table. How much is a CD? CDs are $10. I'll only have eight bucks. Take the eight bucks, give them a CD. It helps if you know your margins. That's why I talk about margins. So you can have these in your head and you know how much you paid for that CD. Maybe not exactly, but you know the CD is about a dollar or $5 or you're pricing them at cost because you're trying to get rid of them. You know what you can and can't make deals on. So if you walk up and say, t-shirts are 10 bucks. Ah, crap, I only have like seven bucks. I mean, honey, do you want to get something else? I can say, no, no, don't tell anybody. Give me the seven. Because I know I paid five fifty with shipping to my door for that t-shirt you wanted. I know that I'm getting new t-shirts in a few months. Happy to get rid of it and make a couple of bucks. But I make a fan. You can say, look, if you sign the mailing list, I could do it for seven bucks. And I'll throw in a bookmark. How about that? Do the razzle dazzle. Do it. Sell them. It salesmanship can be fun. They can say no and you go, ah, fine, take it. You fine, twist my arm here. Give me your seven dollars. Don't get on my mailing list. See if I send you porn, uh, mister, you'll get no nudes from me then, sir. And have a good night. Be you. You know, be funny. Be goofy. Be stupid. That's a lot. Let's review. Um, step one is deciding what items you're going to sell. You got to pick a thing. Uh, pick posters. Pick buttons. Pick bookmarks. Pick trading cards. Pick t-shirts. Try and get ambitious. Put a few packages together because you want to vary the prices. Try and get two or three things on your table as quickly as possible. But if you got to start with one, start with one. Know your margins. Not exactly, but know what costs a lot and what costs a little. Know what, if I said you have to give me something, 
like a challenge or something? You had, what, what would you give me? If you had to give me something off your table, what would it be? You would say, oh, these stickers, they were on sale. I got these ridiculously cheap, right? But not my iPod Touch that I branded. That Those are 800 bucks firm, right? Create packages. And then when you create a package, you did discounts. You've created discounts. You haven't just created packages to control your costs. You've created discounts for me. Gamify that. Make that little dopamine hit in my brain go off. Give me that drug. That's what keeps video games going. Your table's your store. That's your store, man. That represents you in your show. Everything represents you in your show. Your car represents you in your show. I make a big argument for that. Wash your car before you go to the gig. Make sure it's clean inside. Unless you play a sloppy slob on stage, then whatever. I say have freebies and a mailing list. Those are debatable, so I put them together. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't care, but think about it. And then always keep improving your space. The last thing I kind of want to point out on this is a lot of times I can come off as a bit of a hard ass because I really do think, you know, I don't give you a lot of excuses for not doing hard work. The worst day in show business, the worst day is better than the best day ever as a banker. It, so yeah, you got to clean a toilet because you run a theater. You got to mop a floor because some kid vomited during your library show. Wah. People have real jobs. That said, if you need to buy some buttons for a hundred bucks, put a blanket on the floor and take cash only a dollar, whatever, man, you're doing it. 90% of the people in the world are not doing any of that. They are waiting in ways like double Dutch and they're never going to jump in. They're waiting and waiting and waiting. They're scared. They're worried. There's all these excuses. You bought a blanket from target. You got some custom buttons. You got 20 singles in a little bank bag in your pocket. Buttons are a dollar cash only. Who's with me? And then I want to see improvement. If I come back in five years, you still have that stupid blanket. We got to talk. But yeah, then you get a table, then you add stickers, then you have t-shirts. Then next thing I know, you're running amazon.com. Fine. If you need to start somewhere, start somewhere. I did not start with packages of crap with my face all over them. I started in the coffee shop. I put down a cheap sheet I bought at Walmart and I laid out my stuff and I started hawking it. I started selling it. So when you say get a table, do most places that you go into to work, do they not have tables that are provided for you? Or are you going to have to bring in like a card table, something like that, uh, that you need to put all of your material on it, so this is uniquely my experience uh but the theaters i play don't always have tables and then oftentimes this is unique to me i walk into a space i kind of have control of the space a lot of times the manager isn't really there with me so here's the keys and there's set pieces lying around and i can't tell what's a set which i that is sacred and never touched if i see a pen on a table backstage i do not move the pen because for all I know, that pen is the punchline to a sketch you just spent five minutes on stage building that's performed the next day. So if you crumple up a piece of paper and leave it on a chair, it's there when you come back. I've just been taught that. It's been beaten into my head. Card table costs 40 bucks at a Target. It's portable. It's light. I carry it in. And then I can rig my battery. I put my battery underneath. And there's Velcro straps that I've taped to the table to hold the battery in place. So my table is better than your table anyway because uh, it's kind of rigged with my lighting design in mind. Um, so I would say carry your own table with you because also what if your table's crap? You know what I mean? What if your table's not, it's wobbly. So I mean, again, I'm trying to have a standard, but working in theater, especially I see a, a lot of wonderful tables, but if the manager's in there to go, Oh no, no, we own that one. Take that one. I don't know that you're not doing arsenic and old lace the next night. And that that table, now your stage manager running around. Where's my table. It was right here. Who moved my table? I've just had that beat into my skull. You understand? Like, it's just, you just don't touch. So when you're doing college shows though, they have tables cause you have to fly in or you have to take a train or something. Depends. Uh, I usually don't do either of those cause I have so much freight. I usually drive in oh. and I still have my table in the car because again, now it's hit or miss. Uh, the problem I have there is they have a table and it's 10 feet long and four feet. Why a little too much table for me? Um, so usually I go in first thing with light and sound, I have some light and sound in the car. Sometimes their sound system breaks. I got to go get my 75 watt speakers out of the car and do my damn show. I go in first recon the area in my rider. It says a table for meet and greet. And I don't sell stuff at the college. So I'm less picky Meet and greet after the show. Uh, and I'll see the table and I just, I don't say it, but I think, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to sit at that. That's gross. So I go, I go, you know what? Uh, go ahead and get that. Put that one back. I've got one. little, and I always just make it a little higher, a little taller, a little shorter, a little fatter, a little wider, a little, I don't know. It's a little more better. Let me go get it instead. And I just try and kind of bluff my way out of that one. Before we get into uh, the end here, could you just go through this material that you have and just show us yeah. uh, these physical, cause I'd love to see the buttons, the matchbooks, the, you know, just some of this stuff that you have. Oh, totally. uh, and I'm sure that our viewers probably just want to see like what type of quality 
of objects are you selling that people would actually be willing to put their money down right. for? So two different sizes of buttons uh, with two slight ones that has shading on it. This doesn't. Uh, this one was uh, a little more popular and it's a little cheaper. So one and a quarter versus one and a half. I don't know why that is. I don't know why it matters. They, to me, look about the same. Who cares? Um, but when I put them on the table, people prefer this one to that one. And I mean, there's barely any size difference. Um, I was doing, uh, I had three different kinds of buttons and they were a buck 50. Um, then that's fun. I love them sold out. Unfortunately, these are the only ones I've left. <laughs> I have like six of them laying here and I've been giving away. I found, I posted on Facebook in an event. I was out of buttons for five months. I wasn't going to do buttons for a little while. I found a little baggy, little sandwich baggy of buttons. I don't know why, maybe to go to a radio station or something in a box. And I was like, Hey, buttons, the first 15 people to walk in the door, get a free button tonight. And just posted that as a thing to post in my Facebook event. Uh, the program has been very popular. Now I get these cheap enough to, I give you one of these when you walk in the door. So you actually get a second one in your swag bag for no apparent reason, but it's a traditional theater program. Uh, they just kind of tells you about the show, what you're going to expect, a little flash page with some reviews. And then um, now if I'm doing traditional theater sponsorship, this is where the ads would go. In this case, just kind of placeholders. Again, just bragging about how awesome the show is you're about to see. Some samples of the artwork. I do medically accurate sideshow banners, which those will be for sale next year. My friend Katie Hovney is a medical illustrator. So these are scientifically accurate sideshow banners. And then this is the one for colleges. So it has my agent's name here. Uh, in the theater version, it says like uh, runs an hour and 25 minutes with no intermission. You'd know that if you're going to go pee. Uh, no flash photography, although I always put no photography or video during the show. However, photo opportunities will be available in the lobby after the performance because I want you to, yeah, you want to post on Instagram. Don't take a picture meeting fire because I'm making this face and it looks awful. Um, use a nice picture that I like, but if you want to do a selfie after the show and then, then, then that. So it says different stuff on the back and that's the program. Black and white posters. There's two of those, uh, two different styles, two different posters and then two full color posters. And this is a double sided poster. So you get two, I'm throwing two of these so you can hang both of them or frame both of them or whatever. And here's a wild thing to think about on several occasions. People have sent me photos and I'm Mr. Nobody. You haven't heard of me for a reason. I'm not super famous. You weren't like, who's this guy? Everyone's talking about. No, I'm a nobody. I'll be a nobody tomorrow. That's what I do. I'm a small time vaudevillian. People frame these. And have put them one guy in his office at work because they're they're not they're you know safe for work posters. You can put them up there. So he's got them in his in his office at work. Uh, and he's not a hobbyist, he's not like a juggler or a fire eater, just a dude, a muggle out in the world, has them in his office. And there's a lady who produces a theater here in Chicago next to her bedroom door on either side of her bedroom door are my posters. And along the hallway going in are the ticket stubs to every Broadway show she went to when she lived in New York and worked on Broadway. So I'm up there with, you know, cats in its first season, had to begin the angry inch when it was off, off Broadway. Like it's a wall of fame and it never in a million years would have occurred to me that you would give a half a crap about this stuff. Like I'm, I'm a nobody. You saw my show, but sometimes, you know, you never know when someone's going to really spark up. And I think about all the shows I've been to that. Yeah, they were nobodies, but they were damn good. They were brilliant. There's tons of stand-up comics that I can't remember their name, but in the moment, what an amazing show. What an incredible show. Uh, I got two different styles of uh, trading card. So these are collectible trading cards. And this, this is what I send to the college. There's a third one that I'm designing right now that'll go in here. So the colleges get this as like a promo package. And then the back is just sort of my, uh, oops. Yeah, that way it goes that way. Uh, the logo and the, a little bit of a website. But they're kind of, if you could read this, there's jokes that make more sense once you've seen the show. And what else do I have? So this is also a nice little bag. The link is on the, uh, the Google Doc from Amazon. Um, they're a little expensive. I think it's like 20 cents per bag. So I'm only buying a hundred at a time. So number one, look and see if you can get these on Uline in this style, but they are resealable and I really like them. So one of the most expensive things in the bag is the stupid bag. So you can see I've got posters behind posters in the, the swag bag. And then this is also nice. I'll get to a second, the VIP version, which I have laying right here. I throw my business card in so you can figure out how to contact me online. Uh, just as a fun thing. And then also your sponsors throw their business card in. People give discounts to coffee shops. You know, when you're talking to people, now you have a bag and maybe if you could do, I mean, if I could sign one or two people, if you owned a Starbucks nearby and would pay me two or 300 bucks, I would not only put your card in exclusively your, your advertisement, but everyone who walked in the door would get a free swag bag. You would have bought everyone a swag bag. And I can guarantee a certain number at that point. 
uh, that happened just because she asked. She was like, can I put my business card in there? I was like, you can put whatever you want. It, there's room. Put whatever you want in this bag. Have a Put a kitten in there for all I care. So you get the two cards. The, the bookmarks are double-sided, so I give you two of those. So it's the same bookmark twice. Uh, Amazon on occasion does free prints. I got 50 free four by six photographs. So I sent them this and they printed my postcard as a photograph. And then you get uh, this and the custom bookmarks I'm out of right now, the custom matchbooks I'm out of right now, but I bought two stamps. I ordered two stamps for 20 bucks. I stamp one side of it. I stamp the other side of a white, uh, their wedding matchbooks is what you search for on Amazon. But I mean, what a color is, is mine's red ink on a white background because it looked nice, but maybe your show has a color theme that mine doesn't then you would use a different color. But those un, those blank matchbooks are really cheap. Custom matchbooks are not expensive. I did it as a test. And then really like the fact that one thing in my bag was handmade by me. Like I sit at a table. I also put these stupid cards in sleeves. Uh, each one of my trading cards comes with a stupid plastic sleeve. And that's me sitting and, and binge watching Netflix on my computer and doing 5,000 of these at my desk, which I think is also kind of funny. Uh, I think that's all I have currently. Unless I skip something, you know, that's, that's. Crazy. Well, you said that you're going to show how the VIP bag is different. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. But I want to make sure I'd showed you one of everything I've got. I think that's it. Uh, oh, different size buttons. I've done different sizes. You know, I've done larger buttons, et cetera. Those are just for freak show and tell. Um, Do people like the smaller ones or the bigger ones? Currently the smaller ones, but I think that's a trend. Because in the 70s, like the old timers wanted the big, you know, the smiley face buttons. There were these like two and a half inch. I think the kids these days, although my average age of an audience member is in their 30s. Uh, the average person buying tickets to my show is a 50 year old white woman. Uh, but so these are more popular, I think, because they're more fashionable. But if you skew younger, if I were a, a pop band, I might only own these because I think that, you know, your, your Gen Z and your millennials are going to go for these or maybe this size. These got outpaced. I had a bunch of these left over is how I knew these were all gone. And they were the same. They were the same price if you bought them separately or you got to pick one. You know, you get uh, choose a button, choose a bookmark and and choose a, a poster. And that's a dollar. And so these were the ones that they these were the ones they chose more of. Um, this is a cool idea. And it's, it's sometimes a little hard for people to understand how I do VIP tickets. But this is something I at least want you to understand and consider because it is for me um, a really, really, really big deal. It helped me out a lot. The traditional way you do VIP is you demarcate certain seats. You say the first three rows are VIP and the first row of the balcony and the two on the sides and the box seats. And those cost, I'm going to use round numbers. It's easier, $100. Then the next few rows cost 50. The next row is 25. And then you can stand in the back for $1.50. And that's the way all theater has been done. Throw that out. I'm working 100 seat venues. I cannot risk the fact that I sell a bunch of general admission and the first three rows of my theater are empty because nobody wanted VIP seats. It's not going to work for me. The way I do VIP is different. If you buy a VIP ticket from me, and they are the ones that most often, is that true? 50%, maybe a little less than half, sell out first. But they do sell out on occasion. So instead of paying 15 for my show, you can pay 35 for your 35 bucks. Now, I do photo ops with everyone. I'm not a big deal. There's only 100 people in the theater if I'm lucky. So that's, I'm not the Rolling Stones. So everyone gets a photo op. Uh, everyone also gets a souvenir program and I give away bookmarks like their water because they're cheap. But you get a swag bag. That's the bag you just saw without the posters in it. So it gets less than a dollar, including the fancy. And this is from Uline, which by the way, if you live in Chicago, uh, don't go buy blue bags from Uline. If you like this bag, if you think this looks good, come by my house and I'll give you 50 of them. Uh, Uline, you can only order like a thousand and I do not need a thousand of these in the next five years. So don't buy bags. If you live near Chicago, just swing by Tom's place and he'll give you a handful of them to take with you. And then be aware, be aware of that. I'm joking. Wait, I'm not joking. Actually, if you want to do that, that's really seriously, totally cool. But if you own a theater and you're about to order blue bags, maybe call a couple other theaters and you all pitch in on the thousand because the minimum order for you line is it's like going to Costco and buying mac and cheese. You're buying a truck of mac and cheese. So this is your swag bag. So in here, well, this has gotten a little, there's three trading cards. Hang on. I've, as I move around printed stuff, I've, there. Um, so there's the wedding planner who booked me to do her big show launch announcement through her business card in the swag bag. So everyone who came in got a, uh, a VIP ticket, got a swag bag, and then everyone had, got one of her business cards. And then the bookmarks and all the paper stuff. That's less than a dollar. And then the seating is what's interesting. So when you walk in, hey, thanks for ordering 
tickets. Thanks for coming to the show. Oh, you guys got VIP tickets. Here's your bags. And they go, oh, people don't know what they bought, by the way. They go, oh, it comes with bags? I can't set it right there on the ticket. They don't know. They just bought a ticket. 35 bucks sounds cheap if you go to theater. So, yeah, we'll get the VIP. Who knows? Click, and they go through. Uh, what you get, though, is also prime seating. You don't get to pick a seat online. What I do when I go to a venue is I stand on stage uh, when I'm thinking about renting the place, and I look around as I'm checking the place out. I go, okay, I want to rent your place. Give me a second. And I decide how many VIP tickets I've got. I say, okay, that row is awesome. That second row is good. This is good. And this, this is not VIP. It's a weird angle for my show. These. And then I count them. I say, okay, so that's then 47. So let's say I have 45. 47 is a weird number. I'll do 45. I have 45 VIP tickets. And that's what I put when I do well-attended, total venue volume, and then 45. Now, this means that they can pull from your gen ad and you got to kind of watch what you're doing. But what doesn't happen is that none of them, if none of them sell, I just seat them as general admission. So it comes showtime. It's 6 p.m. VIP tickets have stopped selling. Shows at 8 p.m. So I got two hours to do this. I get to the theater. Let's say I put 45 up online, right? And I sold 20 of them. Cool. I take the VIP bags or I've got little reserved signs that were free from American Express. And I put on 20 seats reserved or I put the bags on the seats, but I mark them. The rest are open seating. So now when you come in off the street with your 15 bucks in your hand, hey, is it too late to get a ticket? No, I got some seats left. What? Uh, come on in. Here, thank you so much. Here's a custom bookmark for coming to the show. When you go in, any seat that doesn't say reserved is open seating. Have a good time. Thank you for coming. Bathrooms are right over there. Bam. There they go. They sit down. So I've, I've reserved my VIP seats. So it is possible that I'm sitting here for 35 bucks and you're sitting right next to me for 15, but you didn't get a swag bag. But you also had to get lucky. I knew I'd be getting a good seat. You took your chances. You hit the lottery. So you the got time, there an hour early and that's how you got that seat. Well, that too, but you may have also, I, uh, last few shows, the VIP seats were all gone. You couldn't sit in the front row because I sold them all. And that's an ideal situation, but that's easy to fix. If you put them online, if you're the Rolling Stones, you don't have empty seats in the first three rows. Those sell first, then the next tier, then the balcony, right? I might have a situation where I sold three and now the first three rows are three people. And that, that doesn't work for me. So now those three would be in the best seats, in my opinion. There's, so don't sit on those three seats in the front row. Sit anywhere you like. Thanks for coming. So now you're right. Now whoever gets there earliest gets those better seats. So the system works for me beautifully, brilliantly. I've had a great time with it, and no one's ever really complained. Uh, the only thing close to a request I've gotten was someone had been to the theater before and messaged me on Facebook and said, would it be cool if we sat here? And I just wrote their name on the reserve seat because only it was two people. It was that guy and his date. And I was like, yeah, got you, bud. No problem. So Bob Smith plus one wanted a particular seat for whatever reason. Okay. You got it. I guess if 30 people start making that request, then I'll have to figure out some kind of scheme for it, but it works great. And I'm afraid that a lot of performers aren't using it and they aren't then able to do tiered seating because they have a 50 seat theater and their fear is what if I don't sell them all? I've trapped myself now because I have these 10 VIP tickets. Well, it's interesting. We tell a lot of our clients this that two things, do VIP tickets, charge more for your front row, for your second row, maybe if you have a huge house, your third row, but charge more for that because what's interesting, the people that really wanna see your show, they don't care what they've gotta pay, they'll pay for that VIP. And because of that, the VIP always sells out first. It always, it always does. You can look at burlesque performers, traditional theater performers, variety performers, magicians, every client that we have, when we go check their sites to see how they're doing with their sales, VIP is always sold out first. So for one, you're making more money off of your show with this VIP ticket for really almost no money for whatever it costs that is in your swag bag. But two, it's now showing that you have tickets that are sold out. And when that happens with well attended, we actually take that, let's say you put VIP ticket on the fr front, the first of the list, because you want that to be in the most prominent position. When that goes to so sell sold out, that bumps down to the bottom. So now your general admission will show first, but it says sold out right on it. So people go, they're a little bit late. They go, whoa, VIP is already sold out. This must be a popular show. I better buy tickets now or the whole thing's gonna sell out. So this is also just helping drive that pressure uh, to get more people to buy tickets because it looks like a popular show and, and it probably is a popular show if you're selling out those VIPs so quickly. 
I also have a situation where I played a little theater here in Chicago called Trickery, and there were no bad seats in the house. It's all VIP. So it's all VIP and all general admission. And all I have to do is just kind of watch as people buy. So in theory, I could have had 40 people in a room of 40 and just tripled my ticket price without even trying and just giving them swag bags because they chose that option. So it gives me a lot of a lot of leeway. Uh, you, could say, you could have it a glass of wine that comes with it. It could be a dessert if you're working a restaurant. Come in, get a glass of wine and dessert with your ticket. There's a lot of different ways that you can kind of package these VIPs. So don't be afraid to think outside the box and think, what else can I add to my ticket that probably won't cost me that much money or how I might be able to form a partnership with this theater uh, and may have them or with this restaurant or wherever you're working and have that be an addition to your ticket so you can make more money. And now the restaurant's getting more uh, people coming in earlier to buy dinner because they get a dessert with it, et cetera. There's a local burlesque troupe here in Chicago and their VIP is the first two rows. They've got a weird seating thing, but it's basically the first two traditional rows and not these two traditional rows over here. And you get a photo op with all the burlesque girls at the end of the show on stage if you're VIP. And you get a cocktail waitress that doesn't work there. She's one of the burlesque troupe and she plays cocktail waitress and it says of sash VIP waitress or VIP server. And so you have a server serving you drinks during the show and no one else does. They, they have to go to the bar. Uh, the magic show here, magic lounge, which now has opened their own venue when they were at the uptown underground, their VIP ticket included another show in the back room. So you came to the main stage show and they did, a, it was a lot of magic for your 25 bucks. Uh, you walked in the door an hour early and between like six and 7 PM people were table hopping or you could go to the bar, there were like seven magicians performing. You kind of just picked the one you wanted to kind of hover near and watch the show then the stage show started. That was an hour. Then if you had that VIP ticket and of this 150 seats, the back room only sat, I don't know, 45. Um, but it was much smaller. So if you have one, stay where you are. Everyone else, thank you so much. Drive safely. Good night. And they moved everyone into the next little studio for this. Uh, if you've ever been to the Magic Castle, the close-up room. So a little table and then raked seating. And it was only 45 because if you tried to put 60 in there, we couldn't see over each other's head to see the dude. You know, is this your card? And you're like, I don't know. Is that my card? Uh, so that idea that the VIPs get another damn show. Uh, it, was, it was really cool for me because I got comped a ticket from a performer who was there. And he was in the back room. And so I got the VIP ticket and I was, I, as I left, I thought I was talking to him, Steve, Steve's his name. Uh, I was like, dude, that's a hell of a value. If you like magic shows, like, and I do, I like, so, I mean, I had a guy tear my bill up and put it back together in front of my face with magic. I saw a guy on stage doing this rope thing it was hilarious. Then I got to see you in the back doing this amazing card sleight of hand thing. And that would have cost me, I think $45 for the VIP ticket, 25 bucks for everything except for that backroom show. So yeah, don't be afraid to, you know, really go outside the box on this. Just look at everybody else. What are they doing for VIPs? You know what I do for VIPs? What does everybody else do? Steal their ideas. That's how this, how this works. Yeah. That's what this is for. If you don't steal these ideas, I've wasted my time. When Tyler, you know, I ran an experiment not too long ago with Tyler Wilson. I, I produce a magic convention here in Denver every year. And I like to bring the performers in early and then just produce a show with them. So we were at Union Station here in Denver. And I said, hey, Tyler, I'm just curious here. Uh, with different pricing levels in Denver and what the market will kind of bear. Uh, because we're bringing you in, we're, we're flying you in from Reno. Why don't we have a 25 to 30 person uh, house? That's it. And let's have the front row be $75 and the second row be $50. So that's a $25 difference just from one row. And I said, let's just try that, see what happens. Well, what happened? The same thing that always happens. Those $75 seats immediately sold, immediately. The $50 seats, they were they all went, but they were harder uh, to sell than those $75 ones. And that was only a row away. But I'll tell you, he does a close-up show. Being in that front row, you're on top of that action. I think it's worth the $25 more to be right there. He, I think he had everybody in that front row help him with something. And if there's, if you're in the second row, you didn't have much of a, as much of a chance to be involved in what he was doing. So that $25 difference from 50 to 75, the same thing happened. That front row sold out exactly how it always happens. When you get the, uh, so there's the other thing you'll get and you just see it on the, on the right there, like click here. And the same thing, if you never use Google sheets before, you just click save a copy and then you have a copy you can edit because you're going to want to change stuff. 
But there you see that bag I was talking about there, that Amazon clear plastic bag is costing me 26 cents. Uh, but I love it. You know, four by six prints. Well, they would be $9, but the first 50 were free from Amazon. Um, and then, you know, you see, you see where I get this stuff from. And then everything below, so everything above that black line is here. There's my profit on $10. And that includes everything, including the posters, is $224. If you take out the posters, it's 80 cents. So that blue bag full of stuff is, is 80, I think 86 cents because the blue bag is six cents. And then down below are items that I'm thinking about adding to the VIP bag. And all I do is drag them up above this line and they'll go into the formula. And that allows me to drag it and play what I, what I call the, uh, the buying glasses, better A, better B, better A, better B, better A, better B. And I drag them. Okay. What if I added a t-shirt, but I took out all the posters and bookmarks? Well, what if I took out the posters and added in postcards? So you see, I'm able to kind of flop them around. And the basic, it's cost per and then profit on the bottom. Those are for individual items. And then cost each, total cost, because sometimes it's two bookmarks and they're eight cents each. So it's, it's you know, there's 16 cents worth of bookmark in there. And then up top's the basic 80 cents of cost for VIP bags with no posters, $7.76 in profit for swag bags at a $10 retail. And it gives you a really good idea of how I'm selling this stuff, how I'm packaging it up. And hopefully you'll start selling merchandise or at least giving away merchandise at a really nice table at a local theater near you. Yeah, and I just want to say, if you guys are interested in using Well Attended, using that feature, at least just trying it, seeing how it works, uh, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, I believe. Uh, uh, maybe the next one. Uh, go ahead and just go to wellattended.com forward slash sign up, and you can sign up for an account, and I'll be happy to give you a one-on-one -on -one demo and show you how this upsell, this optional charge feature works to see how you can bring in your products and start selling them before the show starts and see if we can help you make more money on the front end. Now, if you can go back a slide, Tom. Yep. I do want to say we have over, I think we're at episode 74 now with the Well Attended Podcast. And if you want to listen to Tom's episodes where he talks about print marketing, that's episode 70, 71, and 72. So you can just go to wellattended.com forward slash podcast, and you can see the links for iTunes, for Stitcher, for uh, Google Play Music, anywhere that podcasts uh, where you can listen to them, uh, we're there. So you can just also just type in well attended, all one word on your favorite podcast app. Uh, and if you want to download the show notes, uh, just go to episode 72 for this one. And it's the links in the bottom of this YouTube video. Just go to episode 72, uh, enter your email, and that will give you directly uh, ac direct access to these slides with all the clickable links and everything that Tom has shared today. So Tom, to wrap this up here, where can we keep up with you? Because I know you're touring right now. Where can we keep up with you? And if we're in your area, how do we see your shows? So you would need to keep up with me if you are currently in, well, the Midwest, because I just had a, a gig. Maybe the Ohio thing's not happening, but late April, I've been talking to a school in Ohio. And then I've got coming up next week, South Carolina, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Chicago. So draw a line on a map around there, a little bit in downstate New York and a touch in upstate New York, a little bit in Canada, uh, Windsor, Toronto, and then over to London, right north of me. Uh, any of that area, get on my mailing list. I say mailing list because right now Facebook's being real dodgy about how they show things to people. And all I send you on the mailing list is, you know, if you follow my Twitter feed, you'll see a similar kind of thing. Uh, hey, I'm, this date's just been announced. Uh, and then as I start to go on the road, here's where I'll be this week, kind of as a reminder. We're like, oh yeah, that's right. He's coming by here. I should drive over and see the show. The nice thing is when I do the touring show, some of them are renting theaters and performing in really nice theaters. And they're 15 to $35. Uh, generally speaking, I try and keep my prices low and that's low for theater. In fact, that's half the price of most theater shows. Uh, when I perform at colleges, it's even more ridiculous because they're paying me to be there. And some schools you can't come in. It's for students only. But message me and ask because some of the schools either don't care, they haven't thought of it, and they go, oh, yeah, we got like a 500-seat theater, and we expect like 200 students. So, yeah, bring your friends. Tell people. Go to the news. Who cares? Uh, and it used to be, I haven't seen this lately, but it used to be once upon a time they had a plan where they would say it's free to students with your student ID, or it's $5 or $3 for anyone else. And so now you get to see my $15 to $35 show for 3 to $5. I promise you it's worth 3 to $5. Uh, and so if you go to freakshowtell.com or freakshowandtell.com, they'll go to the same website. Or just type freak show and tell into your favorite, it's Google, your favorite search engine is Google, into Google. Uh, you'll see tour dates and you can also see video and see if you like, if you want to see the show. Uh, I can, if I don't do it the wrong way. 
Yeah. So if you if you go to the website, you can't you can't miss it. If you just click contact right here, I can click it. There we go. A little bit of lag. You see right there. Join my mailing list. That's me. And then if you like social media, if you go down below, I have a ridiculous amount. I don't use all this. There's not a ton of stuff on my Pinterest uh, yet. Well, as soon as I figure out how to use it, though, you just wait, buddy. You just wait. It's going to be super Pinteresting once I'm done. And then Bands in Town. I'm on Bands in Town. You follow me there. Uh, Snapchat. I don't know if you want to send me nudes. I guess you use Snapchat. And then the, the big four right here. Look, there's your email. There's your Instagram. YouTube, which you found. Congratulations. And then Facebook. And that's the most common ways to get in touch with me. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to see some people at the show. And I have seen people at the show from when we did the podcast, William. I've had oh, a couple, awesome. Yeah. A couple of folks in Chicago who showed up and they're like, saw you. Well, one time it was, I heard you on the podcast. Then I saw a poster and was like, oh yeah, that's the dude from the pod, which has got to be the craziest coincidence in the world. That is crazy. Yeah, it's not like it's a small town. It's Chicago. There's a bunch of, and they live in the suburbs. So they were in town in my neighborhood for something else. It wasn't like we live in the same hood, right? Um, and then the others just heard me on the show a few times and thought they went to the website, watched the video. I'm like, yeah, we'll go see that. Why not? And so they showed up. Um, That's really awesome. Yeah, I, lo I love this. is my favorite thing in the world to do is, is to do shows. So the fact that I get to do it for a living is an honor I do not treat lightly. And the whole reason we're doing this is to get you here. If you, there's a barrier to entry, if you don't know how to sell tickets, if you don't know how to hang up posters, if you don't know how to do social media, if you're not, if you're afraid you're not going to make enough money or you're touring right now and you're not making enough money, the whole goal in life for me, this is my way of giving back to a community that's given me so much. When I first started doing my weird little show, burlesque performers, magicians, jugglers, mimes, uh, who did I forget? Hypnotists. Those were the folks who supported me, who welcomed me into their world and said, yeah, yeah, man, do your show. That's really unique and interesting what you've got going there. I'll send people, I'll put a thing on my mailing list. I'll, I'll reshare you. This is like MySpace. I'll add you to my top eight friends kind of stuff. People really helped me out. So it's a chance for me to give back on mass. That's why I'm sitting here in my office at three in the afternoon, central time talking to you on Facebook. And thanks, thanks to you, William, by the way, for taking time out of your day to help out. I really appreciate it. It helps me a lot. No, we really enjoy having you. You know, we feel the same way. This is really a way for us to give back to our clients and for people that are trying to make a living doing what they love, because that's really what it's all about. You know, having the right software that you need to grow your business, but not only the right software, but also the tools so that you can learn how to market your shows and how to do this successful. Because when I was first starting out, I didn't have any of these resources. And so really my goal with this is for us to become that resource that really people need uh, to become successful in whatever art form they're doing. So if you if if there's something that's holding you back from being a performer and and we haven't covered it and you can't find it in William's podcast, message one of us. Because if you're saying like, okay, so I know vaudeville, I know fire eating, I know that kind of stuff, right? I know how to do posters and social media and sell 100 to 150 tickets. I'm not big time, but I make a living. But if your hitch is like, I, I want to do uh, the music man, but I don't know where to get the rights I don't know how to cast singers. and I don't know how to do costumes. I don't either, but I know people. I live in Chicago. I've got friends who work for Hamilton, who work for Book of Mormon, who work for Blue Man Group, who stage manage it. You know, so they're working for the big time shows and they majored in that in college. And I can hook them up with William for a podcast, bring them, sit them next to me and interview them on Facebook Live. Have you interview them if you have the question. So if there's something that's holding you back from doing a show that you, you want to do cruise ships, which William has an episode about that getting hired, but specifically you want to do something. I, I know people, I, you know, I can find someone on Facebook that can help you out. So any questions you have, remove the barriers that are holding you back, get out there and do it. I want to see more variety shows in theaters. There aren't enough. There just aren't enough. I've seen enough stagings of arsenic and old lace and Annie to last me a lifetime. I want to see your magic show. I want to see your ventriloquism show. I want to see your mentalism show. I want to see your version of fire eating in a theater environment, in a hotel ballroom, in a back room at a bar, ticketed events. That's what I want to see more of. Yeah. And I really think that wraps up uh, this three-part series, right? On print marketing, the print marketing masterclass is what we've been talk talking 75 about. 75 hours of think about it, this is This has been, what, an hour and a half almost each day. So what's that like? close to four or five hours of content uh, just about print marketing. Who know you, who, who knew that you could talk for that long just about how to how to make some posters and, and then sell them and get them on social media. But that's what we've done. And I can't thank you enough, Tom, for spending 
time today with us for this this past week with us. And once again, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Let us know, and we'll be happy to reach out to you. Uh, I think that's all for me, Tom. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you probably on the next podcast episode that we do here coming up here coming up soon, hopefully. Yeah, man. Thank you for helping out. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day.